there. Good morning, everyone. This is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Again, wanted to share with you an upcoming project. This is a Scale Shipyards U.S. Fleet Boat Gato class. So this particular project came to me uh, from a gentleman out of New York. Uh, apparently this has a very storied past. It took part in a movie that was filmed about 20 years ago. Now this gentleman has had it for that long and he wanted to see if we could convert it to full RC operation. And it looks like at one time it may have actually been an RC model. There's a dry hull configuration inside. There's some linkages. Uh, but none of that running gear is currently in there anymore. So what we're going to be doing is removing any of the components and bulkheads inside that we don't need anymore, adding a more modern watertight cylinder, uh, and then we're going to be doing a lot of cosmetic upgrades to the boat. So before I go any further here, why don't we take a look at what we've got to work with. So here is the boat as it arrived to me. Uh, it has been painted in just a black scheme uh, with a lot of kind of green weathering and I think it was actually modeled uh, to look like a sunken gato. Now it, it looks like underneath the black paint there is the sort of more standard paint scheme with a you know a red primer on the lower part of the hull. This is interesting. I just noticed these. We've got ports. It looks like this could potentially be, uh, or have run at least, an Engel system. So I'll, I'll take a closer look once we get inside. I'm not familiar with the Engel Gato uh, kit, but we'll see if we can positively identify it. I was led to believe that this was perhaps a scale shipyards uh, hull. But at any rate, um, we've got a wooden deck on the top that's uh, underwent some significant damage. Uh, this is all going to need to get replaced. All of the supports are, are broken out and of course all of the internal workings of the boat are exposed. Not ideal for a really nice looking boat and I don't think that will be a major undertaking to repair. Uh, unfortunately it looks like a lot of the masts and conning tower details got smashed up in shipping but that shouldn't be too bad we got missing uh, guns in the front and the back again not too big of a deal um, back end here we got some kind of funky looking fabricated propellers we'll see if we can find something a little bit better to go in there if not they're not terrible uh, I'm, I'm assuming those are probably actually going to put out a fair decent amount of thrust there, a nice size. Um, the rear dive planes look like they're functional but the rudder is seized. Uh, we'll have to take a look inside and see what's going on there. But before I do crack into that, I just want to show you what I'll be putting in. This is an older uh, d and &E Miniatures 3.5 inch cylinder that I had, uh, used but in exceptionally good condition. You can see it, it has a nice sizable ballast tank, one that should be adequate to float the boat at its designed waterline. It's a gas style ballast system. The propel reservoir in there. Um, gas saver float valve and it comes with uh, you know an older uh, automatic pitch controller uh, and, a, and a lot of other goodies in here that'll make this uh, kind of a cool boat once everything is hooked up and functional. So why don't we crack into it and we'll see what we've got to work with inside. Okay, the, the hull alignment is not terrible. Uh, we, we do have some gaps in here and, and some of this is due to the fact that the watertight box inside is delaminated uh, from the outside hull. But let's see if we can get into this here. There we go. Still got some packing peanuts from when it got shipped out. Yeah, this I'm going to say that this is an Engel of Germany boat, uh, you know, an older one. Um, certainly a lot of silicone on here. It, it looks like it was, um, rather than to rely on engineering, they relied on 
uh, mass application of, of silicone to seal everything out. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is all delaminated uh, off the side. So you can see the bow of the boat there. There's, there's no forward dive planes installed in the boat. It looks like perhaps there were at one time. That's going to be additional fabrication as well. I certainly want to have some functional forward dive planes in order to make this thing work really smoothly uh, on the water. Here is our rear setup. We've got some seized oh, and there goes one of the propellers. So <laughs> we've got some work to do, but that's uh, that's all okay. Um, yeah, this is all seized. That's going to need to be replaced with some new hardware. Probably fabricate some new dive planes. But it's you know all in all, we're we're talking about a blank canvas here. You know, it'll be some work to remove the um, the watertight box, uh, or at least make an opening large enough to accommodate the new cylinder that you can see there. But all in all, I'm I'm pretty excited. I don't think this is going to be a terrible project. Um, hopefully you guys will join me. This will be something that I'll try and, and pound out here fairly quickly. All of the paint is on, all of the weathering is complete. I have installed the uh, weapons, the deck guns, and the anti-aircraft guns. Uh, just give you a little bit of a close-up here. Really some light weathering on the boat, just to, to kind of replicate, you know, at the end of a, of a long sea campaign, uh, but certainly not out there for an extended period of time. So. The paint scheme um, on these Gato boats, there, apparently there was a ton of variation and then the skippers uh, made a lot of decisions about how to paint the boats. But this is a classic rendition. It's flat black uh, on the bottom section and light gray on the top. Uh, typically the decking was painted with a, you know, a non-skid coating that was like gloss black. And I weathered that out so that some of the wood color uh, is exposed in there installed some rigging. Uh, I used Stretch Magic one millimeter thread uh, for that. It's typically used in like bead jewelry and that kind of thing, but it works perfect for rigging for these bigger scale U-boats because it's got stretch to it so it maintains tension. Uh, I really, really like that. So where we're at right now, this thing is going to see my uh, test tank, the swimming pool, to finish out the trimming. Uh, I do have a bunch of foam already installed there because I did some preliminary stuff with it before I put the paint on. So this afternoon, we'll get this thing wet, get it trimmed out, and if everything looks good, maybe tomorrow uh, we will see it in the pond for her maiden voyage. Just finished uh, trimming and it actually worked out really well. It was uh, three dips in the pool and I got it nailed down. This final one, I've got just a little piece of foam tucked under uh, the keel that I'll place above the water line, just underneath the deck to make it perfect. But um, just wanted to kind of show you how it turned out, um, how she submerges, uh, surface trim, submerged trim and all that. So she's in surface trim here right now. I'm gonna empty out the ballast tank. We'll watch her settle down and uh, let you see what it looks like. So again, surface trim, I'm going to vent the tank.
hear the bubbles, and you'll be able to see them here just momentarily as well, right by that rear deck gun. Now one thing about these old fleet boats, both U-boats and the, you know, the U.S. boats, the flat deck on the top, loves to create uh, surface tension that's actually kind of tricky to break. You can see I did that pretty successfully there right now. And I'll just point out too, I got a little bit of air trapped in that rear deck area. So I'm just going to pop a couple of holes back there. And that's why she's sitting nose heavy. Uh, if I tap that down, I'll just bring it down here a little bit more. If I tap that down with my hand, she will sit nice and level in the water there. I can bring it down just a little bit more. And down she goes. So I'll bring her back up again. I'll give it a little burp of the uh, gas ballast system. And this takes just a little bit because the, the, the gas line is crimped to have a nice controlled uh, blow into that ballast tank so you don't overpressure it. You can see it just fighting with the surface tension of that upper deck. And up she comes back to surface trim again. Just a beautiful boat. I am looking forward to getting this thing on the water. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is install our battery. And this is a uh, 12 volt, eight amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Um, all of the connections have been waterproofed. You can see I have a mounting bracket on the inside there, a cradle. And really this just sets in place, just like this. Good and solid. The weight will keep it uh, steady. You can see it's it's really solid. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to leave this connection undone for now. You can see underneath the main power runs all the way down the bottom of the hull, and we've got a waterproof connector right here, uh, and that's what's going to connect to our main cylinder. So let's grab that cylinder right now. You can see it's a little wet. I just had it in the pool testing it for leaks and I'm happy to say that the uh, new seal uh, is working perfectly. So this is about the trickiest part uh, of the whole operation. I'm just going to tuck the power cord out of the way. So what we need to do here is connect our drive shafts. And uh, to do that, you simply uh, match them up with the uh, those dog bone connectors right there 
I'm gonna try and get my fingers in to grab the other one. So it looks like the easiest way to do that is uh, port side drive shaft first and then starboard drive shaft. So those are both in place there now. And once that's done, you basically just uh, drop it in place. So both of our drive shafts are connected and we've got outputs for rudder and dive planes right there. I'm gonna connect the power lead There we go. So there is our power connector. I'm gonna snap that together and make sure that we tuck that down in the bottom of the hull underneath this flotation foam where it's not gonna interfere with our drive shafts. Um, the other things that we need to worry about back here is the main receiver antenna and I am gonna feed that down through the back of the hull as well all the way to the back tuck it underneath this bulkhead right there and our testing tube i'm just going to lay that over the top so our rear connections uh, are all made up now what we're going to do is uh, charge up our ballast system so this is what we're going to need this is um, uh, they call it propel but it's airbrush propellant so what i've got on here is the supply can adapter i'm going to screw that down tighten down the valve there's not much left in here but it'll be enough for testing at the pond i'm going to grab radio system always transmitter goes on first again this is a vex six channel computerized radio. It's really, really nice because you've got the option for setting endpoints, uh, scales, servo reversing, and all of that uh, fun stuff on there. So now that that's on, we can connect our main drive battery. And we're gonna tuck the connections out of the way in this center section. Good deal. So let's check just a few of the uh, functions here. Here's our dive planes. And that's all plumbed in together so that the front and rear planes operate in tandem. Uh, take a look at our rudder. And we'll give it a little bit of throttle. Everything looks to be working really, really well. And uh, let's check out our ballast system here. So this is the vent in operation. And the blow. Now, the blow function uh, isn't going to actually work with the ballast tank empty. As I said before in my previous videos, there's a gas saver on there, and that's a, basically an arm connected to a float. So when the tank is empty, the arm is not quite long enough to depress the valve in there. So what I am going to do, I'm just going to top up the uh, main propel reservoir. And to do that, you simply press down, let it flow in there as much as you can, let it go, let it warm up again. Now, as you fill that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get cold. Um, and we're going to just want to give it a couple of charges. Perfect. Screw the cap back on. 
Now that that is all done, let's move on to securing the cylinder in place. And we do that with this hold down bracket. It goes in place like this. It clips on over top of that nut, just like that. I'm going to use our stainless steel bolts. There's two of them. And the last one. Okay, now that that is done, that is rock solid uh, in place. It can't slip forward, it can't slip back. Um, now that this is, is off, we can see that the pitch controller is functional. That automatically corrects for the pitch of the boat. Now that that's all done, basically I am ready to bring this uh, to the pond. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to disconnect the battery, tuck that back in there, turn off my radio, and I'm ready to put the uh, hull back on just for transport to the pond. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and the build progression uh, for this angle of Germany. Uh, U.S. Gato class submarine. Uh, in terms of performance, just give you a little bit of feedback because uh, I didn't obviously get a lot of footage as I was trying to drive the boat and take video at the same time. It's a great performer. Uh, you can really tell the difference between surface speed and submerged speed. Certainly if you look at the statistics for these old fleet boats, you'll see a significant difference uh, between those two speeds. On the surface, it's a, a very, very quick boat, as you can see in uh, the, the later portion of that video footage. Uh, sets up a really nice wake, but as soon as that thing gets underneath the water, it slows down considerably, but, you know, that's a, that's a factor of the boat design, certainly not anything to do with how the RC version of it was constructed. Has a decent turning radius. Uh, this boat has a big rudder, probably an oversized rudder, located directly behind the propellers, obviously. So turning performance is actually quite good. And then the dive planes um, offer some really good pitch control as well. So all in all, I'm really happy with it. You know, certainly taking a look at what this boat looked like before I got it and what it looks like now, there's a big change. So again, I hope you enjoyed uh, this journey to get this boat back into the water again. Uh, hope you'll join me for my next build. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you next time.